The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to the Ben Heck Show. In today's episode, we're going to build an automatic dog door opener. That's a dog door that stays latched unless the dog is in range. So we'll have to figure out some sort of electronic way to make that work. For starters, we're gonna go to the Dane County Humane Society and get some inspiration from the animals. Here we are at the Dog Adoption Center with all the animals that are waiting anxiously to find new homes. They'd like you to open the doors, literally and figuratively, and bring them into your life. Today we're going to be talking with Mickey. He's a recent acquisition here. He's looking for a new home, and he's got some great ideas on how to make this automatic dog door opener a success. Let's see what he has to say. Hey, how's it going? I heard you had an idea for a dog door opener. What's that? You don't want the other dogs? to hear your idea and steal it? I know, patent law is crazy these days. Okay, let's go outside and talk in private, okay? So what's your great idea? Can you tell me? Really? Okay, so it has to be a comfortable dog collar. It can't shock you, okay, that's fair. And it needs to fit around your neck nicely and the door needs to fit your size. Well, you're not, you're not too big, so I think that should be all right. Mm-hmm. And it has to have hot dogs behind it? We're gonna to have to talk about that one. Is that negotiable? Yeah. All right, sounds good. All right, well, I think we can get that started for you. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. An automatic dog door opener. So how could we do this? We wanna use off the shelf commercial parts and we're not gonna make a final product, but we're gonna make something you might be able to hack at home. So there's a thing called a pet safe barrier. It kind of looks like a smoke detector, but it emits, I don't know, probably some sort of electromagnetic field. And the dog has a little thing that he wears. And if he gets too close to the pet safe barrier, it'll give him a zap. This is so you can keep the dog away from the couch or the bedroom, wherever you don't want it to go. So I'm thinking instead of a zap unit, I mean, we still have the unit that zaps, but we remove the zap functionality and use it to trigger a key fob. Key fob would be like, you know, your car's, you know, door opener. So the dog obviously can't push a door opener button, but this thing will push it for him when he's in range. And then the key fob will go to the key fob receiver and that thing will activate a circuit, which will use a solenoid to unlatch the doggy door for about five seconds, allowing the dog through. Although, basically, whenever he's in range, it would basically stay open, and it would only latch shut once he's out of range for about five seconds. So yeah, I think this is a pretty good plan of attack. Let's see if it works. Let's take a look at the parts we're going to use to build the automatic dog door opener. So this is a pet safe zapper, basically. The premise with this thing is you set it someplace you don't want your pets to go, and they wear this collar. If they get too close to this, at a distance you can set, this will give them a small shock to discourage them. So we're thinking we'll take this and we'll put it behind the door inside the building and probably give it a wall wart power supply instead of the batteries. And then when your pet gets close to the door, instead of zapping them like, no, no, stay away, this thing will send a signal to this and instead of zapping, it will trigger something to open the door. So we'll use this more as a proximity sensor than a zapping deterrent. So the thought is we take one of these key fobs. Now this key fob is set up to work with this receiver. Demonstrate this here. You, actually, you can actually send four different signals to it. We just need one. So we'll take this and we'll make it activate the key fob and we'll combine it into a small unit that we can make a 3D printed case for for the dog's neck. When he gets close, instead of this zapping him, it'll push a key fob button. And this is, you know, a pretty simple circuit. Instead of lighting an LED, it'll probably hit like a 555 timer with a one shot, and that'll activate a solenoid for, oh, I don't know, four seconds to click, allowing the door to be pushed open and allowing your friendly pooch to come on in. So the first thing we need to do is take this guy apart and see if we can get a signal off of it that's not a high voltage shock. Inside the collar, we find a large transformer, a large diode, electrolytic capacitor, and a transistor, which appears to be going to the transformer. So I think this might actually be the trigger point for the shock. A little piezo buzzer speaker. On the back, we have another electrolytic bunch of passives. 
This is gonna be your shock points. Here is your negative, positive of the battery and a PIC microcontroller. Uh, I'm gonna make a mark here on the transformer so I know which orientation it was in. It is surface mount. So I'm going to add a little bit of solder to it and then remove it. Oh, my solder tip is filthy. It's gonna heat the prongs and apply a little bit of pressure underneath it. Switch the other side. There we go. I'm gonna attach this black wire here to the tab that we know is ground. There we go. Okay, so here's one terminal of the shock. So that goes to ground. The other terminal of the shocker hooks up to the other side of the transformer. So this is obviously the power side. I'm just gonna mark that as well. This diode is probably acting as a flyback diode because of the high voltage in the transformer. I think we can remove it safely for our purposes. Yes. We're not gonna shock any pooches with our device. Pretty sure this is an NPN transistor. This is ground and you see the transistor going to it. And then there's a little resistor here. Resistor is connected between these two pins. So what would happen is this pin, which is probably going to be your base, is going to be pulled low by the fact that it's going through a resistor in the ground. And then the transistor is also going in the ground. And this would be your collector. So what would happen is when you put base high, the transistor would allow current to flow in the ground. So this is probably going to be normally low and active high. So this is probably where we're gonna get our best signal from right here. Okay, we put that signal on the oscilloscope and we see there is a pulse, but it's very small, 100 microseconds. So what I think I need to do is find a better way to get a signal off of this. Perhaps, you know, use the speaker. I mean, the speaker goes beep, 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 kind of to warn the animal. So that might actually be a more solid way to get a signal. We'll try that next. Uh, we found this signal coming off the piezo buzzer. It's at four kilohertz. This is probably the frequency just to make it beep. You know, you hear it go beep, 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 but those beeps also have a certain frequency to them. And that's probably what we're seeing here. That might work for the key fob, we can try it. It's not really the best way to do it. But in lieu of a solid on off signal coming out of this thing, it might be our best bet. Let's see what's in this key fob. Okay. It has two batteries like the dog zapper, which is good, which means we can use the same power source. Probably the two larger batteries from the dog zapper. Okay, it's got these cheesy contact domes here. Let's take this apart a little bit further. Astounding build quality. Let's see how the signaling works. Nope. Having a bugger of a time finding ground. Oh, those are positive, okay. Oh, there's ground. Huge ground plane. Get right there. All right. I guess that works. All right, there's our six volts. These devices are similar in size. That's good. And we just have to interface them. All right, so.
These all have a common ring, but it doesn't go to ground. So that makes it a little trickier. Now it's time for a tech timeout. We're using several transistors today on our project hacks, so let's talk about them briefly. Two main types, NPN and PNP. Negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. So on an NPN, if you apply a positive voltage here, it causes the current to flow through the transistor. And you'd usually have your load up here. So whatever you wanna drive, be it um, IO or a small motor, it's here. And when you activate it by applying positive voltage here, the load sinks through the transistor and activates. PNP works the opposite way. When you have a negative here, it causes the current to flow. But in this case, you're probably gonna have your source voltage right here and your load's going to be down here. So when you see something like an H-bridge, they'll actually have PNPs at the top of the H-bridge driving the motors and then NPNs at the bottom of the H-bridge sinking the current to ground. Transistors. Get dev kits fast. Element 14, your dev kit HQ. Here's a test I've done. I've taken the key fob and I've put an NPN transistor across the switch. That means we can use this wire to activate the transistor to push the switch. So that part we know works. And I actually pulled this transistor off of this guy. But what doesn't work is that our dog zapper here, the pulses it was sending to actually do the zapping are very brief, like about 100 microseconds. Therefore, even if we use that signal to drive this transistor, this thing doesn't pulse long enough in order for the key fob to turn itself on and send the signal. So we need to find a way to get a more solid signal off of the dog zapper. I do have them connected together, so we can use one set of batteries for both. This thing's not gonna be zapping any dogs, so it's not gonna be using nearly as much power as it did, because it's just receiving, not transmitting. And this has a nice built-in battery holder. I did notice something else. Uh, there's a high and low setting. These are all the address lines on the key fob chip. So if we wanted to, we could set all of these and change which code it uses, but that's not really the point of the project. So that's where we are. <laughs> Let's do a demonstration of this. So here is the device emitting, I don't know, probably electromagnetic fields. And uh, Felix has the device we're going to build into the dog collar. So we have the receiver here for the key fob. So if Felix moves closer, this should go off. There we go. What we did here was we took a 555 and we used it to sense the pulses coming off of the dog collar. Now these pulses are very short, but the 555 is in one shot mode. So if it sees an active high or a rising edge, it does a one shot of about one second duration. And it sends that pulse to the key fob, basically manually shorting out one of the switches using the transistor. We have a NPN here, we should be using a PNP, but it, it works in this configuration. So yeah, let's do a couple more iterations of that. All right, so bring it in range. Increase the power a little bit. And we'll have a one shot here as well. So if this gets a pulse of any kind, it will activate a solenoid for, I don't know, three or four seconds. So the lock will be open so the dog can come through. So we'll basically have two 555s in this, which is another example of how we can use discrete logic instead of microcontrollers. Even though they're cheap, sometimes a good old 555 will get the job done. Beauty. Now that we know the circuit works, I'm gonna combine everything into as small an area as possible. Put these back to back. They're pretty much the same size. But then I'm also gonna to have to miniaturize this 555 circuit and sandwich it in there someplace. I'll probably also use the larger batteries that came with the dog zapper just because they'll last longer. All right, so that's what I'm gonna do next. First, I'm going to prepare the key fob. I'm using leftover plastic that I always keep around from packaging to make an insulating layer under where the 555 one shot will go. Next, I carefully rebuild the 555 circuit that we know works using a surface mount 555 and the smallest versions of the required components that we have on hand. 
The goal here is to keep everything thinner than the two batteries. I'm mounting components side by side whenever possible and using thin wires. I also collect the wire leads from components, such as resistors and capacitors, and in this case, I'm using them to run stiff power lines. This also helps keep everything in place. I'm trying to keep this as modular as possible. Basically, there's the 555 one-shot circuit, the key fob, and the dog zapper. These three things combine to make the whole unit that will go on the dog. Some components we only had in through hole, like these capacitors and one of the resistors. Still, we got it all down pretty small. We'll be using the larger batteries from the dog zapper instead of the smaller batteries from the key fob. The dog zapper basically always runs, it's always looking for a signal, but at a very low current. We should be fine. The most energy is consumed and it's actually transmitting back to the doggy door. Here's my progress with the project. I took the 555 circuit that we tested and I miniaturized it using as many surface mount components as I had laying around. I kind of made it flush with the key fob so it won't take up any more room than it has to. So we tested this out, we know it still works. So my next step is to add a few more components and then kind of marry this to the dog zapper and make the unit as compact as possible. At least as compact as the dog zapper originally was, if not more so. Electric tape has been placed between the two units to prevent short circuits. Yeah, they might not happen, but this just eliminates one more thing that could go wrong when you're trying to troubleshoot. There are two coils on the dog zapper used to detect the base station. I've removed them and I'm now rewiring them sideways to save even more space. With batteries, this whole thing is under half an inch thick. Not bad. Here is the key fob combined with the dog zapper. It will no longer zap dogs. And I made it so we can put in more batteries this time. And this is gonna go inside of this 3D printed case that I made. It's kind of like the original pet zapper case was. All right, so we can put this guy in here. To recap what we did in this episode, we took a dog zapping collar that zaps the dog when it gets too close to this emitter base, and we changed it so that it actually activates a key fob. This zapper collar actually had a warning beeper in it. We took the pulse coming off of the warning beeper, used it to drive a 555 one shot that would push the key fob button long enough to activate the receiver base, and the receiver base lights up. But what's gonna happen is when the dog gets close to this base, instead of this sending a signal to shock him, this is going to activate the key fob, and the key fob receiver will activate a solenoid, unlatching the door, allowing the dog in. In this episode, we basically got the dog part of it done. In our next episode, we're going to take these things and build them into a doggy door so they can mechanically unlock it, allowing the pooch wearing the receiver unit to walk into your house. We'll see you then. <laughs> Here we are with all the dogs that are waiting anxiously for a new home. They're hoping you will open the doors, literally. <laughs> it's a madhouse! Hey look, oh you're full of hot dogs? And so what's your great idea? Oh, really? <laughs> He's just using me now. I know your agent here really wants you to get the best deal on this project, but you have to tell me what it is first. Yeah. All over my black jacket, sweet. Now my tape measure is going to smell like hot dogs. Ooh, oh yeah! Ooh, ay, 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 ay. Don't forget, you can subscribe to this channel, join the Element 14 community, follow us on Twitter, and become our friend on Facebook. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. <laughs> <laughs>